Amen? How come when I say amen, nobody wants to say amen? Man, this is not good. As I said yesterday, every time these people sing, man, I just feel like I can never sing in heaven. I can't wait for Jesus to come soon. I thank you so much for the wonderful song talking about our Lord and our Savior. I am. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Choices, choices, choices. Choices, choices, choices. 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 Choices, choices, choices. Okay, that was a bit close. People, can you try to go faster? Like, I choose life, life, life. Can, okay, let me hear everybody say, I choose life, life, life. Go. Yon. Okay, let's try it again. I want you to say that at the end. Not, I choose life, life, life. It's, I choose life, life, life. All right, ready? Choices, choices, choices. Choices, choices, choices. 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 Choices, choices, choices. <laughs> Better luck next time again. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you guys for participating and showing me that you still have energy this morning. We have been going through a lot of things this week. And just before we begin, I'd like to give you my contact. I don't want to be your text mate, so please don't text me for no reason. But if you have any prayer requests that you would like me to pray for, or you have any concern that you would like to talk to me about, to pray over something spiritual or whatever you are struggling with, or even good news, or even a, a message of hope that you have discovered from the Bible, there's my number at the top, and my email is mjosef at live.co.uk. And also, I'll be available after the service to pray with you. I thank the two young ladies who came and prayed with me yesterday. And I keep on encouraging you that choose the right decisions. We have been looking at several things, and I really pray that you have been understanding this week. How many of you have been understanding the messages this week? Okay, amen. I am glad. How many of you have no clue what I've been talking about? There's no problem. All right, there are still some people, but I, I, I pray that you can even understand the summaries that we are having to really simply tell us that the decisions that we are making in life are very important. In the beginning, we started with what is choice. We know choice is the act of power or power of choosing between two or more possibilities. We saw that the, our life that we want to live is defined by the choices that we make in life. We saw the choice that Adam and Eve decided to make. They were given between life or death, and what did they choose? They, they chose what they thought was life because the, because the serpent deceived them that you shall not surely die. Thank you so much for the water. The serpent deceived them that you shall not surely die, but what happened in the end? They died. We discovered that every temptation that the devil can bring to you, whatever it may be, is only for a while because the world passes away and the lasts thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. What was your choice? You see, people already started sleeping. What was your choice? You chose life that you don't want to fall under Satan's deception in the same way as Adam and Eve did. We looked at friends of destiny. We looked at the character of dinner. We looked at the fact that she also wanted to associate with the daughters of the land, with the girls that were there in Shechem. 
We looked at the way that things just happened so fast. All she wanted to do was have a little bit of fun. But what happened? Things happened so fast that when she went to see them, Shechem, the son of Hemor, the prince of the country, saw her, took her, laid with her, and defiled her. And here he offered her this life, material gains that she could have. But yet the end of it was death. Simeon and Levi went and killed all the men. We looked that Jesus wants to give us life. What was your choice then? What was your choice? What was your choice? What was your choice? We looked at Dinner's life and said that we want to have the right kind of friendships. Friendships that bring us closer to God and not remove us further away from Him. We looked at the next topic, unshakable faith, at the life of Joseph and established that Jesus wants to have a relationship with you, not your father, not anyone else, but personally get to know you more. We looked at the fact that, 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 that Jesus once he said to the disciples, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross, and follow me. The life of Joseph was established through his father. But yet, in his father's faith, God had plans for him that the devil tried to hinder and bring death to the life of Joseph. But Joseph did not choose to die. We discovered that the life of Joseph was de de decided on the fact that he chose that this personal savior of his father would become his personal savior. He chose life. And therefore, idolatry could not shake him. Neither could a woman shake him that we're going to discover today more. Or a prison, neither did the prison shake him. Because the Lord God was with Joseph. Because Joseph had decided that he wants God to be his personal savior, he had him all his life. We discussed who is your faith rooted upon and what did you choose? Man, we're sleeping. Let us focus. What did we choose? What did we choose? Yesterday afternoon, we discussed about my number one idol. An idol, we focused that it's an object of adoration, something that you give time, you give money and devotion to. Time, devotion, and money, sorry. I did not put money at last. And we discussed, what do you give your time, money, and devotion? And this is simply the message that I wanted to get to you yesterday afternoon, that God had actually chosen Israel. God had wanted to save Israel since the beginning. And he chose them from Abraham to Jacob, even to themselves. He, he saw them and said, I want to save them. And he did not only say it, but he actually did it. He went, uh, okay, I, yes, 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 Israel's choice. And he confirmed this choice that, that through Moses, he told Moses, I want to deliver the children of Israel. Then he went and told the children of Israel, he told Pharaoh, and even confirmed it to them that I want to save you. And he saved them. He did. And even in Exodus chapter 20, verses 2, he tells them that I am the one who brought you out of the land of Egypt. What was Israel's choice? Israel wanted other gods. They wanted other gods, and then they made other gods, and they even shared the same seat with the God who delivered them. You know what this reminds me of? What this reminds me of is, is, is of a, a, a person who loves you so much. And then you get stuck in a mountain. Example, Mount Batulao. How can you get stuck in Mount Batulao? But you can. Maybe, oh, Mount Ta'al. How many of you know Mount Ta'al? 
You get stuck and maybe your foot is in a ridge. Your foot is there and then this person hears that you're stuck and then goes throughout the night searching for you. An example, he is calling your name. I only know you, Rikla, so I'll kind of bully your name. So he calls your name, Rikla, Rikla, where are you? And searches the entire mountain. He looks for you up and down. He says, I want to save Rikla. And gets there and finds you there, stuck on a log. And he's like, Rikla, I am here to save you. And then you're like, what are you doing here? Uh, could you leave me alone? I, I don't need any salvation. Who told you? Who told you I, I need salvation? Or in other words, you allow him to carry you down the mountain, but when he gets to down the mountain, when people ask you, how did you get down the mountain? You're like, I got down on my own. In fact, I don't even know who this guy is who tried to save me. This is the same thing that Israelites did to God. God saved them, but they chose other gods. And many of us are doing the same thing. We are sharing God's seat with movies. We are sharing God's seat with social media. We are sharing God's seat with other people. And this was the result. Anger. Israel was told to choose. 3,000 people died that day. I told you that even Jesus has done the same for you. This, it could be you, that you're doing the same thing for Jesus. Jesus came and saved you, and he's offering you life. But are you choosing other idols in place of Jesus? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I told you yesterday that choose you this day and I thank you for those brave souls that came up. I thank you for the decisions that you made. Six people desiring to be baptized. More than ten people wanting to have Bible study and many wanting to rededicate their lives again to Jesus. Can I hear an amen? amen. Those brave young people, I can see you today. I have been praying for you yesterday. I've been praying for you this morning. I ask and pray that if there is others who would like to say the same, please think about your decision today. What did you choose? What did you choose? All week we have been choosing life than death. Today, I will discuss a very important topic, the Christian focus. The Christian's focus. You know, we live in a world of temptations. We live in a world of temptations where, you know, you can tell me, you know, preacher, preacher, you've been saying all week that I need to be making the right choices. You have been telling me all week that I need to make sure I choose life and not death. But how can I do this? How can I do this? How can I make sure I constantly choose life? You're right. You're right, it's so hard because we live in a world of temptation. When you notice that even the way we dress, the way we dress is influenced around the world. It's influenced by the media. You know, I was, um, I was watching, I was, when I was in Field School of Evangelism, there is a show that Filipinos like so much. It's either Eat Bulaga or Showtime. Am I right? And they love it, or, or they, there's others. I, I'm sure there is others. But everywhere, even if it's in the pastor's house, they always have it on. And you know, this shocked me so much. Why? Because you know, when they're having these shows, there is always this backup dancers at the, at the end. You know, they're dancing, they're doing whatever, and they're dressed so provocatively. We look, we go to SM. You go to SM, and when you're even wanting to buy something, you see the, the sales assistants who are dressed in shorts, very short dresses. 
and maybe some of us think that this is the right way to dress. We go around, you know, it's only, I've seen this, you know, sometimes you can only see this in the Philippines. I was looking at an advertisement. They were advertising Century Tuna. I don't know if you've seen those advertisements. They're crazy. It's like, reveal the sexier, healthier you. What does that have to do with tuna? I'm like, are you serious? How come people are dressed so bad and they're advertising tuna? And so we live in a world of constant temptations that is influencing how we dress. And I can see some of these ladies coming with this kind of dresses to church every day. They wear dresses which they have to pull down constantly when they stand up. They wear dresses which are revealing too much. Why? Because we are living in a world of sin and we are tempted. The media itself is tempting us on what we are to watch. Our friends are telling us, have you watched the latest movie? Did you know that Hercules is coming out? Or whatever movie is the latest one. And you are just there, you're like, um, I don't know. And then they're like, ah, oh, you're old, man, you're boring. And so you, you want to be in with your friends. You want to watch the same things. There are temptations everywhere. Our usage of internet. You know that there is temptation even when you go to an internet cafe, young men and even young ladies. I remember I was in Ramos Tarlac. Um, I, Tarlac is in the north, maybe most of you know it two years ago, and when I was there, I was entering an internet cafe, and this was a notice that was in the board, that in the door. It says, Dear all customary, we are prohibit and restricted for all political websites and adult sites. Thanks. Actually, there was another poster that was saying, please, young men, no pornography in this internet cafe. We are influenced in what we watch everywhere we go. Internet is in access at a click of a second. We are influenced upon what we eat. Maybe you go to Pizza Hut and you could smell that nice pork burning and you're like, hmm, that is so good. Can I just not eat it right now? And I will not tell anyone? Oh, I, I remember I was, I have my friend, and my friend, uh, they have this bread pan. Do you know bread pan? Okay, so now you're going to discover something about bread pan today. So, bread pan, I was, I was, gonna, I was about to eat it, and then I turned it around. And then it says that, that this, this, um, this product is made in the same instruments as, as fish, as whatever, whatever. Then it says as mollusks. And mollusks are sea animals. So I was telling my fellow pastor, I was like, uh, by the way, you know we are not supposed to eat that. Because it actually has some, some, it's made in the same product as sea animals. And my friend was like, could you wait for me to finish it? And then you can tell me. This is a world that we live in, that you're like, man, can I just finish my food first? Don't tell me there is pork in this food. Let me finish it first. We are influenced and tempted everywhere we go. Our friends, you know, I, I never wanted to join Facebook. I never wanted to join Facebook. But because all my friends were on Facebook and they're telling me, man, why are you not on Facebook? I, I ended up like, okay, I need to join Facebook. And then Facebook became addicting to me as well. Like, I always want to check my status. I want to check, you know, actually they were saying, that it's a psychological thing that when you post something on Facebook and nobody likes it, you'll be very sad. Have you ever experienced that? You post your profile picture and then you only have two likes. You're like, ah, oh, come on. Nobody likes me? And then you notice your friend and she has 150. Like, ah, oh, how come I'm more prettier than her? Temptations all around. How? can we decide? How can we decide? We cannot decide on our own, young people. This is where I need to tell you today, you cannot rely on yourself. 
You know, it was so easy for me to say choice, and then you reply what? Choices. Choices. It's so easy for you to do that. But that's not the same thing when you are faced with temptation. You cannot make that personal decision on your own that, you know what, I'm gonna, like, it's all right, I can handle this. When that pretty girl, your girlfriend, tells you, let's spend a night together watching movies alone. You cannot just say, ah, it's all right, I'm gonna go spend the night. Nothing is going to happen to me. I'm a strong boy. I read my Bible. It's not enough to make good choices or bad choices. We have to keep our focus on God. Youth, we have to keep our focus on God and this is where our memory text is coming from know ye not that they which run in a race run all but only one receives the prize so run that ye may obtain and every man striveth for mastery and is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible I therefore run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body under sub I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I should be a castaway. We're going to look today at the story of David and Bathsheba. Let us pray. Our dear, kind, and heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to worship you. Oh Lord, I know I am speaking of deep things, and I'm praying that your daughters and your sons may understand something. I am sorry if I've prepared this presentation in a complicated way. Make it simple for them. And dear Lord, speak to each and every one of us that today we can make decisions to choose life to choose you and not only in ourselves but looking at Jesus please dear Lord be with us help us to focus today help us to understand that even if we desire to choose right we have to always keep our focus upon you because that's the only way that it can lead us to have the right choices I pray and ask in Jesus name Amen. You know, I have to keep watch, you know, uh, of time, you know. I, I got a nice present from all of you, and so thank you so much. Maybe some of you don't know, but thank you so much, uh, and now I can keep the right time. I'll make sure you get home on time. David and Bathsheba. David and Bathsheba. Do you guys know who David was? All right, all right. David was a king. And in fact, this king was a mighty king. He was the best, one of the best kings that ever reigned in Israel's history. And this story happens at the height of his power. Do you understand that? This is when it's like the prime. It's the best time of his rulership. What happened? You could tell that it happened at this time because as Bible students, as people who study the Bible, they understand that here was the time where it was in the middle of David's reign. Are you with me? When this story happened, it was in the middle of David's reign. In fact, David had just been portrayed as a mighty warrior. Imagine, on the previous chapter, the previous chapter on 2 Samuel chapter 10, verses 18. Read with me what it says there. It says there, And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men, 700 chariots of Syrians, and 40,000 horsemen, and smote Shabak, the captain of their host, who died there. Can you see that? He smote, 
him and his army, they smote 40,000. This only happens in games for us these days. Have you ever seen somebody killing 40,000 people? That is crazy. David and his warriors were mighty. And here, they had just withstood one of the largest empires at that time. And he was portrayed as a mighty man. Why? Because he was with the Lord. And when you notice what happened next, is that all the kings around him, they were subjected to him. It says, and when all the kings that were servants to Hadassar, this is the man whom he was fighting, and he killed 40,000 men. When all the kings that were servant to Hadassar saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon, Amnon, Ammon, yes, anymore. David was a scary guy. He's not like me. I ain't scary at all. I have not even killed one person. David was a mighty warrior. A big man, you know. He was a big guy. And so, what happened in this? Throughout David's life, David had been led by the Lord. Throughout David's life, ever since childhood, remember the story? Only a little David, only a little kid, right? You know those stories, and you know how he smote the big giant. Why? Because he relied on who? On God. We saw the fact that even when Saul was chasing after David, he still could not capture David. Why? Because his hope and trust was in the Lord. But David, at the height of his power, at the time when he is a mighty king, he started to rely on self and trusted himself to make the right choices. Are you with me? Choices. He relied on himself to make the right choices. It says in 2 Samuel 11 verses 1, that, and it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all of Israel. David, instead of going to battle with them, he said, you know what, uh, it's okay. I, they can handle the Ammonites. They can handle their opponents because their opponents are too weak. They don't need me there. So David sent his mighty warriors to go and fight instead. And what did David remain? And you see, not only that, sorry, he sent them, and what happened is that they went and killed the whole place. So they won the battle. So can you imagine David? He's like, yeah. Like you can just imagine walking around the temple or walking around the palace and it's like, uh, did you hear the news, guys? Uh, my team just beat up the Ammonites. You know, you, you could feel a bit happy, right? Like they just won the battle. They had just conquered the Ammonites. And so this was good news to David. David, a mighty warrior, a man who is a big king, a great king, in fact. He's now here that he hears that they've completely destroyed their enemies. And they're still fighting, in fact. They were actually not completely destroyed, but they were still fighting, but they won the battle. But what did David do? It says there, And David tarried still in Jerusalem. David remained still in Jerusalem. David became ease. He became relaxed. You know, what else to do? Come on. Who wants to fight me? There's nobody who wants to fight me because I've beaten up everyone. So he was easy. He was easy. In the book Patriots and Prophets, 
It says there, David was surrounded by the fruits of victory and the honors of his wise and able rule. It was now while he was at ease and unguarded that the tempter seized the opportunity to occupy his mind. Don't you find it it's at the time when we are in ease that the tempter decides to come and occupy our minds? Maybe we have just, we have studied too much and we want to take a rest. Like, ah, you know what, I'm, I'm too tired of studying, what can I do? All right, you know what, I think I need to watch that movie. Let me, let me, let, let me watch at least just, okay, one series. One series only, one episode. One episode only I'm going to watch and then after that I will go back to my study. And then that episode ends up becoming five episodes, ten episodes. You say, ah, you know what, I don't have anything to do. Then your friends tell you, hey, do you want to go out to Paseo? And you're like, um, uh, okay, I have nothing to do. I might as well just go. It is when we become easy, it is when we trust in ourselves, you know, you're like, I've done good work. Maybe you have finished studying your Bible. In fact, do you know the greatest time when I have been tempted in my life? It is exactly when I finish preaching sermons. When I finish doing week of prayer, then on the night of when I finish, that's when the, the devil is like, you know, you've done good work this week. Why don't you just watch one movie? Then I'm like, okay, I think I, need, I deserve to watch a movie. I, I've, been do, I've, I've been studying the Bible all week. You know, this week I have not even, I have not been on Facebook for the past five days. Imagine, can you imagine five days no Facebook? I don't know if some of you can handle that. But, 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 but after this, it's like, why don't you just go and use Facebook for a while? It is when we have become in the Lord, when we become at ease, that the devil tempts us. What was David's choice? It says, and it came to pass, in the evening tide that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. You know, it's in the evening time. Can you imagine? David had been sleeping all day maybe. You know, he has nothing to do. What is he going to do? Is he going to fight anyone? There's nobody to fight. He has a great team fighting out there. What is he going to do? Let me just relax and, you know, uh, let me just walk around. You know, it, it, it's natural for him. He has nothing to do. He's relaxed. You know, he could say, let me just play one World Warcraft game. Let me just watch one anime. You know, it, it's, it's when you're easy. It's when you're relaxing and you're idle. It's when you don't have focus on God that the devil comes to tempt you. And you notice it says in Patriots and Prophets, the fact that God had taken David into so close, into so close connection with himself and had manifested so great power, favor towards him should have been to him the strongest incentives to preserve his character and blemish. God had been so great. He had been so great to David's life. This alone should have been the reason why David should have never even thought about doing anything else. But because he forgot, because he allowed himself to become easy, he allowed himself to become relaxed. He was in the way of the devil. So what happened? And it said, <laughs> ah, and from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Can you imagine with me? Can you imagine if the woman was ugly? Do you think David would have been still staring? He would have been like, ah! Like, what is going on? Hey, please, guards, tell that woman to, to stop, to stop buzzing naked around. 
If that woman was like a bit too big or she did not keep her hair or she, she just didn't care about herself. You see something? Temptations are very beautiful to look upon. Do you ever think that the devil would offer you something if it's ugly? The devil would never give you the consequences of what you're going to do. Every time, the devil will present to you something even better. Just think about it. Adam and Eve, do you think that that fruit looked ugly? Imagine if that fruit had worms coming out and it was just so disgusting. Do you think Eve would have taken it? No. Think about dinner. Do you think that the ladies were very ugly? What they were doing was nasty. Maybe they were dirty, they were playing in mud, and they were just, they were talking funny. Like, you know, it was not like that. They were not like aliens. These were pretty girls that Dina wanted to associate with. Do you think Joseph, do you think Potiphar's wife was ugly? Potiphar's wife was beautiful. And it was someone who was tempting to Joseph. Do you think the golden calf looked ugly? The golden calf did not look ugly. You see, the desires are always beautiful. These temptations are always beautiful. Those dresses always make you look a bit beautiful. They make your shape come out a bit. They make you, like, they make guys look at you. They make people think that you're pretty. The, 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 the food, the food that you're eating, it always tastes good. It doesn't taste bad. You know, the movies that you watch, have you seen people cry in movies? They're like, oh man, did you see that he died? And it's just a movie. It's because the movie is so good. It's amazing that they're raking millions and millions and millions. Do you know the games? The games are not boring to play. Why do you think people spend all their life watching World Warcraft, playing World Warcraft or whatever the other games that they're playing? They're not boring. They're fun to play. Even the ladies that people watch in pornography, some young men, they're not ugly, fat women who are just there. These are pretty women as we call them. Temptation is always good to look upon. The book of Patriots and Prophet goes on to say, you know, even if, even if, I'm going to return back to a bit of uh, Patriots and Prophet, we, we, no matter who we are tempted, no matter what comes our way, we should be able to say the same statement that the Patriots and Prophets say, that the fact that God has taken us into such close connection with him and had manifested so great favor towards us, this should be to us the strongest incentive to preserve our character unblemished. Are you with me? Choices. Because God has loved you so much. Because God has sent his son to die for you. Because God loves you so dearly and he has given you salvation free. That should be the reason why you would say, I am not going to allow myself to be tempted with these things. You're going to tell yourself, I need to look upon my Jesus. But is this what David did? David did not. It says in the next verse, And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? You know temptation? When we are tempted, it always takes time for us to fall under temptation. Have you noticed that? When all your friends want you to go to SM to watch a bad movie or a movie, it always needs that you have to save up for money, you have to get a jeepney, and you're on your way there, and you're like, I think I should not be there. But you're still thinking about it. When, 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 when you want to watch a movie in your house, and you don't want anybody to see you watch that movie, you always have to make sure that your parents are gone, you have the laptop alone, you're sitting alone, you're in the room, you always have to make sure so many steps. And this is the same thing that happened to David's life. 
When David was tempted, he had to go through a long process. And imagine, he, he sent and he inquired, who is that lady? Who's that very pretty lady bathing herself? And then one of the guys told him, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam? And you know who Eliam was? Eliam was one of the mighty warriors of David. And then he adds to that, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Do you know who Uriah was? Uriah was another mighty warrior of David. In fact, one of his 300. One of his top 300 warriors who, who are the ones who are making him win. He knew that what he was doing was wrong. But yet, he sent messengers the second time and took her and came in unto him and he lay with her and she was purified from her cleanness and she returned to her house. Have you noticed how many action verbs are there? Again, showing the rapidity, showing the, the, the time sequence, how sin happens so fast without even you knowing. Though you have enough warnings, if you remain there in the temptation, you will fall. David fell. David fell. It says in Patriots and Prophets, page 718, when one, but when in ease and of self-security, he let go his hold upon God. David yielded to Satan and brought upon his soul the stain and guilt. He, he, the heaven's appointed leader of the nation, chosen by God to execute his law, himself trampled upon the precept. He, who should have been a terror to evildoers, by his own act strengthened their hands. David chose to sleep with Bathsheba. What was the result? And the woman conceived and sent and told David, I am with child. Now the consequences started to happen. The woman was pregnant. Yes, this is the consequence that happens when you sleep around. And be careful, because when the consequence happens, this defines your life. And we'll see how this will define the life of David. Though it's seemingly life, he started to cover up for his mistake. Number one, he tried to make Uriah. Uriah was out there fighting with, with, the, with his servants. He was out there fighting. He tried to make him come back so that he can sleep with a wife and cover it up. Uriah said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. And then he tried to make him drunk so that he can sleep with a wife. Uriah did not sleep with her. And then he resorted to cover up his sin with killing Uriah. Can you imagine the consequence of sin? Most of the ladies here, or most of the guys here, we find it's easy for us to commit sin, but when consequences come upon us, we seek for other ways to cover up sins, like abortion. We seek for other ways to cover up sins, like, like we steal, or, or we, we threaten somebody, hey, don't tell anyone. If you tell anyone, I am going to kill you. People threaten like that these days. They tell you things that they are trying to cover up for their mistakes. Be careful, young people, the choices that you make. Notice what Uriah said. Notice what Uriah told David. This is what David should have been saying. But now Uriah, his servant, is saying it. He told him, the ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go into mine house to eat, to drink, and to lie with my wife? Jo uh, Uriah was telling David, what you're doing is wrong. I cannot go and sleep with my wife right now. But David in his relax, 
David, in his ease, was tempted and fell. And at the end, they thought that it was okay. After they killed Uriah, Bathsheba got married with who? Guess who? David. Now notice when God comes in the picture. God's judgment was death. It says in verses 27 of the same verse that when Uriah and when David and Bathsheba got together, it says, but the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. The Lord sent a messenger. And then after sending a messenger, David repented. But it had already caused the consequence. Look at the consequence. Death and shame. Consequence number one. The sword never departed from David's household. They were always fighting. Have you ever heard of Absalom? Absalom was always fighting against David. And in fact, Absalom, on the second point, Absalom, the son of David, the son of David himself, he went and slept with all the wives of David in front of everyone. Can you imagine what shame that is? And the third thing is that the child that Bathsheba was carrying also died. It's never, it's never a nice thing when we choose to lose our focus from Jesus. Yes, beloved, temptations will come. Yes, beloved, we are living in a world full of temptations. All around us are temptations. We have to decide to keep our eyes on Jesus. It says in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 to 27, I therefore run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it to subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. This should be your desire, young people that you keep discipline, you keep your focus on Jesus. Yes, you may fall like David did, but you can see David's cry. David was crying in, in Psalms chapter 51, verses 11, in fact. 51, verses 11, and he cried unto the Lord. This poem, David wrote that, uh, when he repented from sinning with Bathsheba. And he said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all our sins. If you make a mistake, young people, get back up. You can be tempted and you may fall. But I would like to encourage you that make that decision that you would confess your sins and you would keep your focus on Jesus. You would not be idle and always, always in your time, when you're in your day, when you finish your studies, after church, even after now, the decisions that you make each time dedicated unto the Lord. No, you cannot do it alone. When your friends say, let's go out to Paseo, and you know that you might be tempted if you go to Paseo, pray to God and say, Lord, you know if I go to Paseo, I might be tempted. Help me to make a right decision. When your friends, are, when your girlfriend or your boyfriend or a pretty girl is walking around and they like you, and you know that if you like this girl or if you get together with this boy, you're going to get in trouble. Pray to God because you cannot do it on your own. And tell God, God, you know that I cannot do it on my own. Help me out. If you are being bored of studying your Bible, if you don't want to study anymore, if you don't want to pray anymore, pray to God and tell him, Lord, you know I don't like you. Yes, you can say that. You know I don't love you. Help me to love you more. Young people, Have a relationship with God. Keep your focus 
on the Lord. No matter how successful you are, no matter how much you love God right now, there will come a time that if you lose your focus from God, if you start thinking that, okay, it's all right, now I can do my own thing, you will fall again. What am I talking about? Keep focus on Jesus every day, every hour, every moment. I would like to make an appeal as Mom Imperio is coming up, yes, for those who would like to say today, Lord, I would like to choose you. You have done so much for me. And this is a serious appeal. I noticed yesterday some of us were laughing, some of us were looking, oh, why are you going up or anything? But I pray that you can think in your heart right now. Are you choosing life? Are you choosing life? For those who would like to say, number one, that they would like to rededicate their lives today. For those who would like to say, preacher, I would like to have more Bible studies. And especially for those who would like to say, I want to give my life to Jesus through baptism. I have learned that I cannot trust myself. I need to trust in God. If that is you, please come and stand right here in front of the stage. Thank you.
Don't wait for your friend. Don't look upon your friend. Look upon Jesus. Is there one more? I would like to say, I want to choose life. I want to publicly declare it. Is there one more? Is there one more? I'll be praying. Thank you for choosing to make this public declaration that you want to follow God. That you want to follow God. And I pray you will be the modern day Josephs and the modern day Estes. Let us pray. Our dear kind and heavenly Father, you have seen the decisions that have been made. In a special way, I'd like to thank you. Thank you that your Holy Spirit is working through these young people thanking you that you have given us an opportunity to discover your word and how we cannot lose our focus. No matter how good you have been in the past to us, no matter how much you have led us, dear Lord, we have to keep our focus on you continuously. Dear Lord, these young men and young ladies have chosen today, they would like to serve you all the way. Give them the faith of Joseph and the courage of Esther. Bless them and keep them and help their decisions to be solidified in heaven that they can never be shaken with any earthly winds. I thank you. And I praise your holy name that you're going to help us that our, our Christian focus would be to you, Jesus, our author, and finish of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'd like to ask you, maybe if you guys can, we can meet after and we'll pray together, is it okay? So you could just stand here and we can sing together and then we'll pray after.